By the end of this video, you should be able to 1. Know how a linear search algorithm works and describe it to another person. 2. Implement your own linear search algorithm for integer arrays and arrays of type object. And 3. Know how to successfully override the equals method inherited from the object class. Let's first go to a class that I created called search sort factory search sort factory. Now this is how a linear search method works. I'm going to pass in two formal parameters. One is going to be an array of integers. So here the reference will be passed in. And I'm going to pass in a target. That is the integer I'm looking for. Now the way that a linear search works is it begins at the first index of the array and it compares it to target. If the target is equal to that value then it's going to return the index. If it's not, then it's going to proceed to the next index. And it's going to keep doing that until either it finds the target value in the array, or once it's completed searching, it's going to return a negative 1. Now the negative 1 indicates that the value, the target value, was not in the array, since negative 1 can't be used as an index. So here I have my standard for loop. I begin at index 0. I need to be less than the array length because the last index in the array is n minus 1. I do a comparison. If target equals array at index i, it'll return true if it really does equal that value. And then I'll return the index. So linear search is all about finding location. <laughs> location, location, location. Where is my target value in the array if it's there at all? Now if I go through the entire for loop without returning an index, then I'm going to return a negative 1. And the negative 1 indicates that the target value is not in the array. Here I have a linear search method that's maybe a little bit quicker. Um, it's quicker in this sense. I'm also passing in a boolean value which will tell me true or false if it's sorted. So if it's not sorted, let's just run the old linear search method and return the value there. But if it is sorted, then I don't have to keep going once I'm starting to get values in my array that are actually larger than the target. So if target equals the array value at index i, great, return index i. But if I stumble upon the target value being less than the array at index i, since the array is sorted, that means that it won't be anywhere later in the array either. And so I return negative 1. But if I never encounter that situation, I make sure to return a negative one anyways, because that means I haven't found the target value. Now, linear search can be extended to objects. And this method will work successfully if we have correctly overridden the equals message. Now, remember, every class you write is an object. It inherits all the traits, all the instance variables and behaviors that are inheritable from class object which means it also inherits the equals method. But you have to be able to override the equals method because what makes two objects equal can differ depending upon the objects. So I pass in an array of objects and I pass in a target object. So this would be great for strings, by the way. This would work perfectly. I pretty much behave the same way if the array value at index i equals the target return i. So what I did was I created a triple class and a triple only has three things. It has a status, it has a name, and it has an age. There's my default constructor and then my specialized constructor. Here are my setters and getters and here's my two string method. But this is where it becomes more important. I want to show you how to override the equals message. Now remember this was inherited from class object but I'm going to override it so that it specifically indicates when two triples are equal. So okay, I'm going to return a boolean of true if they are equal and a boolean value of false if they're not. 
I've generalized my equals message to take a formal parameter of type object. If obj is an instance of triple, then I'm going to do all this work of comparison. Otherwise, I'm just going to return false, because if it's not even a triple, then it can't be equal to a triple. Now what I do is I set a temporary value equal to a, a triple, a data type triple. I'm going to cast the object to a triple, because it was an instance of triple. And what makes a triple equal to another triple is if the status, the age, and the name are all the same. That's what makes two triples equal. So if temp.getName equals this.name, and if temp.getAge equals this.age, and if this.status, technically it should say temp.getStatus equals this.status. That's OK. That works, too. If all these three things are true, then return true. They really are equal. Otherwise, return false. But if the instance of a keyword returned a value of false, comparing obj to triple, to class triple, then return false. So that's how I override the equals message. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class in the default package called test linear search. And I'm going to test searching for integers. So I create an array of integers. My target currently is 23. My search result is going to equal search sort factory dot linear search. I made that method static, so it belongs to the search sort factory class. I pass in the array reference and then the target value. My output message, I'm going to assume it was found, but if search result is negative 1, I'm going to say not found. And then I say print line the value of target, my output message, the value of blank, which is search result, search result was returned. So let's go ahead and run this. Hey, the value of 23 was found, the value of 5 was returned. And so here's 23. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's change the target to 78, which is not in my array. The value of 78 was not found. The value of negative 1 was returned. What if I change this to 45? Here's a 45, and here's a 45. What's going to happen? The value of 45 was found. The value of 4 was returned. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And so what my linear search method does is it finds the first occurrence. So something could occur in an array multiple times, but all the linear search method is going to do is return the first occurrence if it finds that value. OK, let's go ahead and focus now on our triples. So now we're going to test my triple code. I create an array of five triples. I've got Henry, Raymond, Stacy, Henry again, and George. This Henry has a status of zero and an age of two years. Raymond has a status of one and is five years old. Stacy has a status of three and is four years old. This Henry has a status of one and is three years old. And this George has a status of 5 and is 12 years old. Now I create a target triple with a status of 1, a name of Raymond, and an age of 5 years old. Then I store the search result from the linear search method, passing it a triple array and a target triple. Now what's going to happen is it's going to store this, or it's going to run this particular method, which has been generalized to class object. Output message is found. I'm going to assume the positive that I did find it. Otherwise, if search result is negative 1, output message wasn't found. And then my standard output message. So let's run this. Hey, the triple Raymond was found, age 5 status 1, index of 1 was returned. So remember the way this works. Henry here would be at index 0, and this is my Raymond. How about the George sitting at the end. So let's change this. George. Let's change the status to 5. And let's change the age to 12. Let's run. Triple George was found. Age 12, status 5. Index 4, which would be the last index of a 5-sized array. 
But let me change this George's status now in the target to 3. Remember, it takes all three values to be equal. No, George was not found, all because I had changed this status from 5 to 3, and so negative 1 was returned. And so that is roughly how linear search works. And that is the lesson. God bless you, wherever you are today.